You can walk backwards the whole time. Yeah, this will hands down be the best camera angle. I forgot the freaking tripod. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I was using it to film yesterday. So. I don't know if you want me to take a little more practice. Yeah. That's going to be good for my knees, though. So. Yeah. Yeah. I need to change up, we will. But you're the main character. No, it's not how this works at all. I'm the loudest, for sure. But Alright, boys, this is episode six. Ish. Six, seven. 6.5. 6.5. Or 5.5. Last week's episode, lost audio. Oh. Like 12 minutes in, so it is what it is. But we're out here. A little bit of a shitty day. You can see the clouds. I'm talking about it's beautiful. Perfect weather for this. Yeah. But the best part is not super hot. I like the hot. <laughs> Bully bold. Last week when we were discing, I hear some chains being hit right now. Yeah, I feel bad for the camera guy when we finally hire one. He's gonna be, this is going to be his life right here. He's just right. walking backwards. But instead of holding just a regular phone, he's going to be holding this big-ass camera. I feel like I should be a different position. Just some more centered with everyone. Yeah. yeah. Good, he's kind of a quiet talker, so I might have to elevate. Yeah. Eventually. So, mm. before we get into the fitness side of things, let's talk a little bit about the Skyfall, Starfall. What's it called? Starfield. Sorry. Sky Starfall. Sky yeah. yeah. Well, Squidley's a fan of Bethesda. Is that what it's called? Yeah. So, tell me a little bit about their original games, Squid. What's your, their original games? What's, your, what's your favorite of their Nature. Skyrim? 2011. Yeah. How many hours you, would you say you clocked in on Skyrim? I don't want to say. <laughs> say it. I think I spent that entire year that it came out playing. I have. I mean, at least on one file over 300 hours. On one file. <laughs> That's it? On one file. That's it? I, Just one file is I it? have a disease called new... I get to a certain point and then I need to make a new character because even though you can do everything on one character... Yeah. You gotta start as like a fire. No, I, no, I got. I do the exact you can't, same you thing. Can't use the spell if you're not that guy, right? I do the exact same thing. I got like, like 30 characters. So, for like 300 hours on each character, give or take. At least on a few, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Probably. Coming through. So, first edition, well, the first original one that came out, like 800 hours on that, and then the special edition, yeah. Another fucking yeah. So Bethesda knows what they're doing as far as RPGs. How do you game at all? I do not. Me neither. Sometimes I hop on Apex Legends for a couple go arounds, but that's about it. Yeah. Um. I had a apartment broken into. They stole my system years ago. Really? I never got back into it after that. Yeah. Shitty people, man. Yeah. I was like, I'm not doing this again. Cause that's exactly what they go for. Oh yeah. You know, continuing on the game subject, um, everyone that works at Red Naps in the back likes Pokemon, right? True. So I'm wondering, what's your, what's like, what's, what's the Pokemon game that got you into Pokemon? Oh, OG. OG, Red and Fire, yeah. Red and Blue. Yeah. How about you, Dave? Uh, I never played Red and Blue. Um, I've always been a Pokemon fan. I just didn't get into the games until <sighs> Emerald, Sapphire. Me and Tommy, because they always release two games at once, so he would get one and I would get the other. And that's kind of how we always did it. Oh, look at deer. Oh, deer. Hi, deer. Hey, look, another deer. Oh, hey, deer. Oh, deer. But yeah, the Pokemon game that I got into was my sister's Pokemon, oh, actually. Geez. It was <laughs> Pokemon Diamond. He said Diamond? Yeah. I never finished it because I was too stupid to figure out what the puzzle was. Well, that was probably yeah. Generation's first go around. Possibly, maybe. Yeah, Pokemon Diamond. Yeah. yeah. So did you even have an SP? No, you just kind of came up with DS? Yeah, and it wasn't even mine. It was my sister's. I just snuck into her room and just <laughs> took it and started playing it. If I fall, it's going to at least make for good time. For sure. Yeah. But yeah, this uh, Starfield that's coming out, super excited for. I love space games, and I love uh, Bethesda's RPG style, so... Hopefully the two will compare or uh, match up pretty well. No, I've been trying to stay away from. I mean, I got a, a kind of a gist, a couple screenshots here and there, and it looks really good. I just hope the gameplay matches. I saw the recent um, thing with how Howard was talking about it, but I kind of intentionally skipped any sort of gameplay aspects. Yeah, yeah. Like just because I want to know at least some basics of it. But, I mean, it's Bethesda, so I'm going to buy it regardless. Right, and it's coming out pretty soon. Is it when? A month or so. 
September, I think. September something. So, I know it's not the same thing, but since it's got star in it, I feel like it's a good segue. You left the last podcast with no audio, <laughs> talking about Star Wars, and I feel like you got something to get off your chest. Oh, yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I can jump in on that one. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people can. So, fuck Kathleen Kennedy. She, uh... What's she do now? Well, she killed all the fucking characters that George Lucas came up with. Yeah. Indiana Jones, fucking uh, Luke Skywalker, all those. Han Solo, fucking killed off in, like, shitty ways. Or just turned into shitty-ass old grumpy men and then killed off. Uh, and her stories suck. She's just a shitty person. I don't know her personally, but fuck her. Can else agree or disagree with this? I don't agree. I don't know who this person is. She runs uh, Disney Lucas. Yeah, I mean, she was she was doing stuff to marbles too. So. Yeah. Well, in that case, I'm, I'm on the I mean, that's right, so. Where the fuck are we? Going through here or around? Through here. Let's interrupt these people I'm playing. I'll go last. Go. I have. So I didn't know Indiana Jones died. Well, the character assassination, the latest oh. movie that just came out. Yeah, me too. She's killing him off, but I also heard that movie flops too. Yeah. In theaters. Almost three hundred million dollars to make it, and it's there's a movie that came out at the same time. I think it's called Freedom Something Something. Yeah, a movie about uh, human trafficking. Oh wow! And you know, the media is not not pushing that. Like you don't see any commercials or anything, any trailers for this movie, but it's doing why? better than Indiana Jones's. So I just found out. Disney had exclusive rights to that film for the last like four to eight years, but decided that they didn't want to put it out. So they sold it to an independent company and Disney is essentially trying to blacklist them and not allow them to put stuff out. But ended up beating Indiana Jones yeah. this week in the box office. Yeah, an independent film. An independent film, yeah. That's what I heard. You guys can fact check me on online if that's if not true. That's just what I heard. So. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, movies are art. Movies are art. Yeah. So it doesn't matter how much money you throw at something. You gotta have, have to have like a passion behind it. Yeah. Sure. Is the other games or movies that are on your guys' radar right now? Um, I don't know how exactly how, how it's really. I don't know what how to say the name, but it's me o mm-hmm. me o. It's a it's like a soul like Japanese style game. I think. So how do you go like? What's the the gameplay like? Uh, Souls like, pretty much. Do you know what Souls like is? I do not. No. Right. Well, Dark Souls. Like Dark Souls. Okay. Yeah. He's walking. Damn, that's a sign. So it's easier to hear me. Walk where I want. But yeah, I'm getting that game so I can play it with my friend. Oh yeah. He's out already. Mhm. He's been out. What is it? Baldur's Gate 3. Possibly going to be the best RPG ever, but. It's still uh, pre-release right now, right? Yeah, it comes out at the end of August or yeah, the end of August. For PC. Me too. I've been playing a little bit early access. Not too much. I didn't want to ruin anything, but. Especially since they're still releasing classes and everything. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sure that if I'm going to invest that much time in a game, do I want to play for that one? Right. I'm good. All right, everyone just switch. I'm solid for right now. Still feeling pretty good. We're 14 minutes in. I know you're not feeling your, your chin. Oh, for sure. Did. Sooner or later. My shoulders are definitely feeling the backpack. Oh, yeah. No. I've said this pretty much every episode, but I want to keep adding it in. Just because we're out here with weighted vests doesn't mean this is the only way to work out. Just like showing up at the gym isn't the only way to work out. You can just as easily walk around your block with your dog or your cat (laughs) or your pet chinchilla, whatever you got, and just get out there 10 minutes a day. Build yourself up 20 minutes a day. Actually, Squidly, why don't you share about your fitness and where you're at with it right now because that 10 minutes a day is pretty much what you were saying last night. Yeah, I mean, I pretty much just live in a calorie deficit and I work out at least like 10 to 15 minutes a day very casually. And what does that look like? Just a full body random workout routine. Not, never the same usually. Just, uh, just to keep my body active, honestly. So where your body types at right now, how is it different in the past? I was 240, almost 250 pounds of pure blubber, and then I got to the gym for three months straight and lost 50 pounds with you, and then just been kind of doing my casual workouts ever since, and now I'm at 190, looking half decent, I think. (laughs) 
So feeling strong. You're good, buddy. You're right. I was literally like, when I first started working out, I was like, oh, look at this muscle. It was like a little tiny. <laughs> <laughs> I was impressed with myself because so, it was all fat before that. So. Well, yeah, he should be in that point for sure. How do you feel physically? From uh, then till now. I mean, a lot better. I mean, one of the main things too is if you do just like the littlest bit of exercise every day, that like, like proper full body, you notice your posture is a lot better, and uh, especially core workouts help with that. And that alone helps out in a lot of different ways, especially someone who sits at a computer all day. It's a little benefit that I've noticed. And I think that's for me anyway. That's people I want to target. People who have that kind of lifestyle where they work all day in, in an office, sitting behind a desk, or like me, they're a gamer, they go home and get behind their computer or whatever and, and sit and game. You have to get out 10 minutes a day, whatever it is. Get your heart moving. And I literally just work out in my room. So I'm not like, you know, spending like 10 minutes getting ready to go to the gym. It's literally just like, I don't really have an excuse. There's weights on my floor next to me. Might mm -hmm. as well just do, 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 do. Oh yeah. At least it's something. Well, I think that brings up a good point too is how you set yourself up for these things, mm -hmm. right? Having those weights right by you, basically urging you to say, well, they're right here anyways. I might as well just get it in. And if you want to take it a step further, you don't even use weights, just body weight exercises. Sure. It's pretty much good enough. Yeah. Show up crunches. For yeah. sure. As long as you're moving, it's definitely nice to have the benefit of being able to up the weight when you feel like pushing yourself a little yeah. bit. I heard something one time, actually it's two different phrases. A guy wrote a book called Take the Stairs. And basically the theory behind the book is to set yourself up, if you have the option of the elevator, you could do that and take the easy way, or you can set yourself up for a hard situation and take the stairs. And that way you're increasing your heart rate, you're getting that 10 minutes in, whatever it is, uh, basically forcing yourself to get that exercise even though you're not going to a gym, you're not doing anything else. And then another one was you go to the grocery store, park in the back of the parking lot. So you're forced to walk all the way through that parking lot and get those extra steps in. Take it a step further, don't use a cart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I think as guys, we all try not to use the cart. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Especially leaving the store, I'm like, I can take it. So every time I go to Target, I literally, I either get like a basket or no basket, and I literally only buy what I can hold physically. <laughs> and I get my little, little bit of Target workout and everyone's looking at me like, it's like I'm saving money. Yeah, right. It was big. That's a good way to save money. You only I mean, buy what you can you carry. Just use the weights at Target too, or go to their fitness department and just start doing push-ups. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're buying them. You're walking towards the register doing lunges. Like, yeah. Oh, I actually changed my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. You guys don't need to go to the gym. Go to your local Target or Walmart and use what they got. Maybe don't encourage them. <laughs> no, I think that's fine. It's illegal. I've been kicked out of many Targets at this point for filming inside. The worst they're going to do is ask you to leave. That's right. Can't yeah, film inside Targets? Uh, not without permission. Oh, oh, you stepped on it. It's really uh, slugs all over the private, private building. Yeah. Where supposed to film in. I probably oh, stepped on a few yeah. backwards. Alright, he did the good. Did it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a life of a slug. Simple. Here's a hypothetical that I heard one time speaking of slugs. If you had to spend 20 years as a slug, but at the end of that 20 years, you get an extra 20 years on your human lifespan, would you do it? And it's not like you have to live that, like, you live that 20 years and then you're back to where you started oh, okay. before you became a slug, but then you get an extra 20 years, but you have to live for 20 years as a slug. And if you die as a slug, you just get reincarnated as another slug. Oh, okay. So you got to so do you, the So you're guaranteed to make it through the 20 years, 20. but it could be like getting eaten by birds every day for the rest of that 20 years. Are so you aware that as a yes. slug? And you remember all of it when you get back. Oh, I'm taking Fuck yeah, I do it. <laughs> I'm taking it. Simply for the fact How I get to live? jump ahead 20 years. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, but I'm saying like it would take you You're back. really giving me like 40 extra years. No, no yeah, yeah, basically. Because your experience, I mean, you're seeing the world around you, but you can't really do anything. Yeah, yeah. the consciousness of a slug. Yeah. You could like sneak into buildings and shit. I'll kill you, Dad, if you were a slug. I'm sure you would. <laughs> or you'd probably run from me. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead, slug. Hang on the vent. No, Lucas would kill you, actually. <laughs> He'd just bat me around and stare at me. That would definitely give you a different perspective. Oh, yeah, for sure. We don't even understand how animals communicate. I feel like after a year, you might like forget what it's like to be human. Yeah. And then you'd like to get back and think it was all a dream or something. What? I used to be what I meant to do. I thought that I had to do it.
shoot for about 45 minutes. So the, the average drive time for the American, average American is 47 minutes. That's to and from. So shooting for around that time frame gives us an opportunity for them to listen to us on their ride home and to work. Um, also, we're gonna clip some stuff out. So a 45 minute podcast might end up being 30 minutes. Um, plus or minus your intro and outro and stuff. So I think we're shooting for about 45 and we're at like 25 right now. 21. 21. So, yeah, I think somewhere in there good. You just let me know when you want to switch. Because I'm sure that weight pulling you back isn't easy. No, it's fine. <laughs> Watch your fingers. So, let's get on a little more mental health kick. Uh, I experienced depression for 11 years. And what I'm grateful for today currently is the gentleman behind the camera, Xavier, that you're never going to have to go through this shit because you're living through my experience. Yeah. And you can use the skills that I've learned over time to not have to deal with this stuff. But when I was your age, I was... I was pretty deep in it, but I did a good job of smiling and putting a face on. Um, and I think some of the biggest skills I've learned to help keep me out of that is just mental frameworks and reminding myself. I said this last or a couple weeks ago, but I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be with the knowledge and information I have today. Mm -hmm. And I keep reminding myself that on a daily basis so that when I feel like I'm behind or I'm not doing enough or I'm not as far as I'd like to be or I play the comparison game, that uh, it's, it's just me, and I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Um, I don't know, it's been a big thing for me. Obviously, there's a lot of other things that I had to overcome, separating myself from people that were, uh, in a lot of ways, holding me back, and it's not their fault, right? I just got caught doing stupid shit to keep me in that spot, and they wanted to stay in that spot, and that's totally cool up on them, but I just personally wanted more, so I needed to fight for my freedom, I guess, in a lot of ways. Yeah. My mental freedom. Yeah, it was good for one person. It may not be good for other people. Mm -hmm. You know, some people can thrive in certain situations where others becomes a complete disaster. Sometimes people can drink. Yeah. Some people can. Yep. So sometimes it takes people a little bit longer oh, to learn yeah. to Zoom in. Right there. Zoom in. Pinch, yeah. Stretch in. It's like they're watching me. I'm out. Pretty kitty, kush kush. This is a campsite. So. When the Michigan have wildcats, <laughs> it's a new thing. It's a freaking bobcat and just attack this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's not enough people out talking about mental health. And sure, people are talking about it, but not skills and tactics to overcome. But I also think a lot of it is. You have to be looking for that thing mm -hmm. at the same time, you know? One thing that I've been really stuck on lately is self-care. It's not taught in school. It's generally not taught by our parents. And there are exceptions, obviously, but all the households that I grew up in, the people that took me in and things like that, never really heard anyone preach taking care of yourself. I, mean, I can't say this about everyone in the world, but I feel like most people are really concerned about themselves most of the time. Right, it's uh, the theory of uh, when you're in high school and you got the zit and you think everyone's looking at your zit, but in reality they're just looking at their own zits, they're worried about their own zits. And I think that translates the older we get, people are generally focused on themselves and concerned about themselves, so why not take that a step up and question yourself, am I happy with what I'm doing, am I happy where I'm at, you know. Uh, are there things that I could work on in my life? How could I improve? Because I believe that I'm going to spend the rest of my life challenging my flaws and trying to build them up and make them a little bit uh, less flawed, I guess. <laughs> but I, I dedicated the rest of my life to doing that. So it's not saying that I'm going to have it all figured out, but at least focusing on the things we need to work on is how we can work on ourselves. Or a lot of the time I feel like people kind of just coast an autopilot and wait for something to happen. But I never really did that being talked about. But you guys definitely got to set a course. You know, just like, be like a dinghy in the water just bobbing on. You got to chart your course. Uh, and uh, I was told when I was a child, perfection is a road, not a destination. And recently you hear a lot of people talking about you got to fall in love with the journey. Mm -hmm. So 
think that goes hand in hand. You gotta set your, set your course and then just go for it and keep going, you know? The world is gonna try to hit you with distractions and pitfalls and you might relax a little bit here and there. You, that's when you gotta be like, not too hard on yourself because that'll keep you in that state. Like I know with depression, it gets you on a cycle of doing things that keep you depressed. The things you keep telling to yourself that end up sticking in your brain and then through your subconscious and then you believe these things. Oh yeah. You know, like... You tell yourself something over and over again, you will become it. Yeah. Especially <laughs> if it's, I hate you, I hate I this, hate I'm terrible, like, yeah. I'm the worst, I'm this, I'm that. Those things get trapped in your head forever. Well, how about this? I'm the best at doing that. Does that work? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a positive thing to realize, too, because you're still saying you're the best. Be good or be good at it. That's what it should be. And the knowledge, too, to be able to reframe that, you know? Because the more you keep saying that, the more you are going to become the best at that. I already am. Now i got to go find something else to be the best at. <laughs> the best at treating yourself good. I know when I was working at the chop house every day for a year and a half straight while I was working there, every day I told myself on the drive-in, I'm strong, I'm confident, I'm well-spoken, I'm in control of my temper, and I'm an excellent communicator. <laughs> to mama. Hey, Matt. Take a, Take a little break. You don't have to turn the camera off, but... Well, here, let me f let's finish my rant. So, um, basically, I said those five things to myself every single day. I'm strong, confident, well-spoken, in control of my temper, and an excellent communicator. But I said those things because I didn't believe them about myself. And I wanted to trick my brain into believing that I was capable of being that type of person. And I just said it every day, every day. And then finally got the op opportunity to open Red Naps. And I stopped saying that mantra. And I just was that person. I believed that in myself. Yeah. And I still struggle with communication occasionally. But I keep putting in effort every day by filming these videos, doing this stuff, this podcast, so that I can become an excellent communicator. Got to the point where I didn't believe it. I started to believe it, and now I'm working on the skill of, like, really honing it in. So, I don't know. I just wanted to finish that tangent. We could take a water break right now if you guys want. Yeah? I feel like that's, you know, part of the first step. I feel like that's the step that everyone, like, knows about. It's just, like, say it. You know, you, you just, I am this person. I am this. I am that. But, like... I feel like that's only the thing that gets it moving. It's when you start saying those things that you actually start doing things that represent that. Mm -hmm. And that's what actually, like, because you can say things all day of the week, you know. It's like, I feel like in a long time, I was in the mindset of, like, oh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to do these things. I'm ready to do these things. And then you just never do them. Mm -hmm. But you're talking a big game. And then, like, you know, with one of my things is just being kind to people. It's like, you know, I had a moment where it was like, I call myself a good person, but then I found myself actually doing things that were just like, oh, this person asked me to do something without hesitation, I, I did it. You know, in, in the past I would never have been that person. And it's just like, sort of a chain reaction, it's just like, the, the action after saying it to yourself is just as important, but I think people do it without realizing that while they're saying it, and being conscious of it is actually how you like recognize it, sure. even if you're already doing it. You just don't realize it. Absolutely. I don't know if that makes sense. Well, I think it's, it's like um, um, knowledge is great, but knowledge is nothing without execution. Right? If you don't do something with that knowledge, like you said, be conscious of it and, and do some build on top of it, it's, it's useless information. Even the things you're doing wrong, as long as you're being conscious of like the goal of, I want to be a good person. <laughs> Did this last interaction I was in, was I, you know, maybe I'm questioning if I was a good person, then you look at it, you're putting conscious effort and saying, well, I did the best I could in the conversation, so that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. I think that's something. Giving yourself that credit, too. Yeah. yeah. And the, con yeah. the conscious part of analyzing what you're doing is the important part, I feel like. And I've heard that repeated recently, where it's like, you can't do anything without, like, consciously, like, thinking about it. It's like, you can get mu muscle memory just doing the same mm -hmm. thing over and over again, and you can get really good at just doing that. But if you never understand how or why you're doing it, then it's easy to just fall off. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not a solid foundation anymore because... I don't know why the fuck I'm doing this. You know, I've been doing this for so long, I don't even know why. Fuck this shit, I'm done, you know. It's really easy to do that. I just heard that the other day in a stream I was listening to, so I thought that was 
Well, good blurb. For sure. It was great insight. Let's keep trailing. You say what? Do I, want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I can go back to recording. I don't mind. Okay. Oh, oh, this is going to be on here? Yeah. I think a lot more people deal with mental health than, than you would know. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's such a big thing, but it's still, see, the last decade, I feel like people are starting to talk about it more, but it's still not that. Uh, there's just not that many outlets for it. We don't fully understand that. We don't fully understand how the brain works fully. So. It's difficult, but I think these conversations is how we can start sparking the change. And hopefully through this podcast, we can get some people to understand that. I want to tell you what, this, this helps me. These little talks, these little walks help me a lot. Just like you, I went through many years of depression that I'm finally getting over now. Based on a bunch of different things, but working out, going to the gym every day or almost every day has been huge for me. Having my son back in my life has been number one. What, th three years ago? Uh, that's when you and your mother went to Atlanta, right? Yeah, that's I think so. Right before naps, or right around when naps got open. Yeah, right, right when COVID hit, pretty much, during the lockdowns. Um, that was probably the deepest, was at that point. Um, COVID hit, hated my job. Only saw my son on weekends for a few hours. And then he was being taken away from me. So I was just like rock bottom. Um, but try to keep my head up, pushing through. I started working with Matt at NAPS, watching him go to the gym every day and seeing his arms getting bigger. I'm like, fuck that. I can do that too. And uh, stars aligned. Sun came back into my life. Uh, hitting the gym every day has brought my mental fucking up here to the point where I'm not coming back down. Or at least I'm not going to allow myself to come back down. How many years do you think you dealt with that? Uh, like, let's see, when did I meet your mother? No, probably my whole first half of my life. Like I said, I'm 46 now. I mean, in my younger days, when I was his age, my teens were pretty cool. I didn't have any issues then. But uh, I'd say from mid to late 20s up until fucking three years ago. So, like, a lot of years. <laughs> well. I'm grateful to be fighting through it. Good morning. So, when you were over to, able to overcome that, set a positive role for your son. And Squidly, I think, you know, it's good things to think about too with your situation with your son, what you're going through right now. For sure. You know, just someone that's fast forward 20 years ahead of you. Yeah. He's working through it. He's got his boy back now, dealing with uh, fighting to get Gene into our lives. But I think. One of my favorite parts about this podcast is we have all different types of generations that dealt with similar things, and the common ground seems to be that fitness is a huge driver on overcoming and battling depression. A lot of the times, like when I was going to the gym solo, I'd walk out of naps and tell everyone, all right guys, I'm going to fight my demons now, I'll be back in 45 minutes. And I think it really holds a lot of truth in just the fact that me going there and showing up, I was. I was just battling, fighting to feel better. So you're not just exercising your your body. You are exercising your mind. Yep. For sure. So just to get up and go to the gym consistent, consistently. Discipline. That's a, that's a, mental, that's a mental exercise right there. Mm -hmm. And it helps. And then after you get out, you get all the... You know, telling it release from working out, you feel amazing. You know, it goes work hand in hand. I think mental health, a lot of people don't understand anybody can be affected by it. Mm -hmm. uh, it is like a spectrum, so some people times. get hit harder than others because of their the chemical levels in their body. But it could happen to anybody. Anybody can become depressed, get angst, have a breakdown. I think too, it's important to note that you can't be 100% all the time. You're gonna have your days where you're down or unmotivated or just wanna say fuck it. But if you have more good days than bad, I feel like you should remind yourself that at least you're winning on the grand scheme of things. And you're not always gonna push through them, but when you push through those days, those feel even better. Sure. Like, I did not want to work out today, but I still did it. Yeah. One thing I will say, too, is I feel like starting, like, if you've never exercised and you are depressed and you start exercising, you're going to let yourself get to the point where you're seeing progress and you're 
you know, even like the slightest little bit of muscle in your arms, it's like, you know, you're doing something new since the depression started and it allows you to sort of build onto something fresh rather than having that sort of base, like foundation of sort of depressed thinking. It's this brand new thing. There's no bullshit tied to it from the past, you know, unless you let yourself do that initially. You know, it's like, oh, I can't do this. I'm, you know, I'm already tired, that kind of thing. So I feel like adding new hobbies like exercise and stuff like that when you're depressed is pretty important because it gives you like a new thing that you, you can try and at least start a foundation feeling good about at least that one thing. You know, it's not tied to all your, tied to all your past stuff. That's why I think at least for me exercise has been pretty consistent um, since I started doing it when I was trying to do better rather than, you know, it was something that I had done and then I got depressed about doing still, if that makes sense. Well, Absolutely. Sure. And well put and I agree. With all that. I think like an add-on to that too is like sometimes I encourage people that are dealing with depression to find something you love but the common thing I keep hearing is I don't know what I love I don't yeah. know what I like so this is kind of this conversation kind of helped me pull it to a point where maybe start with the shit you don't like right because discipline that's cultivated by doing shit that you don't want to do. I mean, I would argue that point, though, just to be honest. So, I mean, why? Because if you're depressed, it's already hard enough to do the basic things. Like get out and of bed? Exactly. <laughs> so it might be good to start with something small and then work up to having at least one goal of something you don't want to do. Just as a little caveat to that, you know? What would you say fitness, though, could be the thing that you don't want to do? Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. start with something where it's like five minutes every day just mm -hmm. doing a basic thing. I was just adding a caveat onto what you're sure. saying, yeah. We need that in this conversation. Because sometimes... We need the arguments. It's like, oh yeah, just, you know, they'll start like saying like, just start going to the gym, you don't gotta work out. You just like, don't even start there. Start two minutes walking up and down the, the stairs of your house, you know, like, just do stuff like that. And once you start to realize, and the, well, this is where that conscious effort starts small. Look for progress, even the smallest amount. Let it fuel you to go further. I've been depressed since fifth grade, but since I started exercising, I've been able to do it consistently even through my depressive episodes. It helps, at least in some small way. So, that's the way I look at it. Do you have anything else that helps you? I like to draw. It's been the second thing that I found. Kind of just lets you. I think people who journal or, you know, that kind of stuff is just a way of putting your sort of emotions or mindset or whatever the hell you're feeling in that moment on the page you know maybe it's a happier image because i'm in a better mood or something or just a little silly or it's you know like a scary one where the guy's all terrified it's like a marshmallow being cooked over a fire but it's all cartoony so it's not like super scary but you can tell i was in the more of a mood where it's like this guy drew a marshmallow getting tortured over a fire <laughs> so you know did you get the marshmallow face and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh no. He's, he's half burnt and looks horrified. Oh, uh, I pictured it a little bit. It's like, you know, if you're feeling the kind of way, then you know, just draw it and get it out of your head right now. Yeah. Have you found any other things, or you think the fitness and the drawing are the two you got locked in right now? Um, those have been consistent, so I'll leave it at that, <laughs> I guess. Are you currently seeking any additional? I mean, always, yeah. I mean, it's kind of life, right? Just hopefully find something else you're interested in. For sure. Take your mind off things. I mean, video games helps, but I feel like, for me personally, it's more of a distraction method than a self-improvement method. Are you comfortable sharing if you're still in that space or not? Yeah, I mean, I, I, like I said, since fifth grade up until recently, it's just something that my brain deals with and I just deal with it. <laughs> what would you say to somebody who's in your fifth grade spot right now? Uh, reverse the thinking early. If you start catching yourself saying, Things like, oh, I think, you know, I get to a certain year of my life, and that's probably good. Yeah. You know, I don't need yeah. to be, an, I don't want to grow old. I don't want to be an old man. Da 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 da. Because for me, that's how it started, where it was like, you know, this kind of sucks. I don't want to, I don't want to do this forever. And then eventually that age gap gets smaller and smaller until you're like, well, maybe in three years, maybe in two years, maybe, you know, until it's to the point where it's like, well, fuck, you know, I can't keep doing it, you know? And if you start giving yourself deadlines, it just, it, it, it stops you from being able to change because you think, I don't have to do anything because at that point, it's over anyway. So you really, that's the kind of really bad thinking you gotta catch early on, I think, is part of it. At least for me, that was the actual example. <laughs> Would you say so. your mindset's different from then until now? Yeah, I still get depressed and everything, and I have that feeling of like, you know, the not good feelings, but like, um, it's not that I want it anymore, or I don't feel like I want it. It's just kind of like, 
it's there, you know, which I think is a has been a major change in mindset. As small as that feels, it's like you don't want to die, but you're still feeling like you want to. You know, it's like, but it's like if I can say that out loud, that's progress. You know, I can say no, I don't want to die. I want to, I want to keep going. You know, but I have my days. <laughs> so it's, you know, it kind of is what it is. I'm gonna take it not lightly, but you know, just realistically, I suppose. Well, I appreciate you sharing. I know that's not easy, especially with the camera in your face. So, I'm not good at speaking, obviously. I don't know how many episodes we've done. I've said barely anything. But thank you for that. Because mm -hmm. you gave words to a lot of feelings I had back in the day. Like, exactly that. Appreciate that. Appreciate you sharing. I spent too much time thinking, so I have a lot of words to say about this, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone want to have any wrapping thoughts? Any things you want to add in before we hop off today? Fuck Kathleen Kennedy. I didn't hear what he said, but uh. Fuck Kathleen Kennedy. I'll say it again. <laughs> oh, well, fuck Kathleen Kennedy and go subscribe.